Hey guys, I'm so incredibly excited for this vlog. Why, you may ask, because I'm making some plant babies. No, in all seriousness, I am propagating three of my all-time favorite house plants. And the coolest thing about this vlog is that I actually have um, these three different house plants in different stages of the propagation uh, process, which means that really I can really show you from the beginning, from the start, all the way until repotting successful propagations, how this whole process works. There are a couple of different methods that I'm going to be sharing with you guys, including water propagation for my Monstera deliciosa, as well as uh, succulent, my fishbone cactus, and how that all works. And I also, of course, have been uh, propagating my chenille plant, that beautiful, pink, amazing houseplant. House so uh, all of that and a little bit more in this vlog. All right guys, let's start with uh, the fishbone cactus. So I have a couple of pieces um, from my giant fishbone cactus. I don't even know if you guys can see how <laughs> large these are. Um, so uh, the first thing, the first consideration is you want to, um, you know, either use a, um, you know, a cutting. These are pieces that I've lost uh, that just fell off and broke um, from my giant uh, fishbone cactus. So uh, I'm gonna be using these, but basically the point that I'm trying to make is that once you've either cut them off or they've fallen off, they need at least a few days, if not a few more, uh, to really callous over. So you want the uh, portion that's been cut to kind of really dry and it will actually kind of change the way it looks. And like I said, after about three or four days, um, you should be good uh, to pop these up and uh, get them to propagate. Um, so like I said, I have different stages of fishbone cactus propagated. I have these two guys as well, uh, which have successfully been propagated um, in this whole process. And I wanted to repot these two together to start to create a new, uh, bigger looking plant in this. So I'm gonna kind of go through all of the stages uh, of this whole process. So I'm going to be potting uh, these up for the first time and then removing these two and putting them in that new pot. Uh, you're gonna need some um, of this product right here. This is rooting hormone and I use uh, Garden Safe, but you know, any kind of product will uh, do. No sponsorship here for this. Um, and like I said, once uh, these have calloused over, you're gonna want to dip them in the rooting hormone. But before I do that, because I'm going to reuse these two vessels uh, for those two new pieces, I want to transplant these uh, successful propagations into that new pot. So the first thing I need to really do is uh, get these guys out of here, get new potting soil in that uh, new container. So uh, let's get started and I'll show you exactly what you all need and uh, what to do. All right, so first things first, in this new container, unfortunately, they, it doesn't have any drainage holes. So if that's the case, I am going to be using like a nursery pot with drainage. And at the base of this, I put some horticultural charcoal um, just to help absorb any excess uh, moisture or water at the base. And uh, this can now go in there. And I've mixed up uh, some soil mix for my uh, fishbone cactus. And I like to use a really well draining, like aeroid type mix. So I've used um, basically like an orchid mix and I've added um, some rich soil uh, to that as well because I want a nice balance. But basically in terms of what's actually in all of this, I have bark, horticultural charcoal, perlite, cocoa choir, um, probably a little bit of peat moss as well and that's basically kind of uh, what's all in here and basically now that that's ready to go I got to get these guys out of here and uh, into their new home together all right guys I'm so curious to see what kind of roots are on uh, these oh there we go that's always a good sign when the roots are coming out of the bottom also a great indication that it's time to uh, repot so very carefully I just have a bowl and I'm gonna try to get this guy out um, these do have little prickly bits, they are cactus, so uh, either gloves or you just wanna have maybe a piece of paper towel to kind of help you uh, not hurt yourself. 
All right, guys, not bad whatsoever. Nice fuzzy roots. That's always uh, a great sign that they are nice and healthy. I'm not gonna kind of finick uh, and try to get, get finicky and try to get all of the um, soil off of those um, roots as they are. So these guys are ready to repot. Um, now it is really important to understand that when you actually are just taking your cutting and you're potting them up, um, with your rooting hormone for the first time, um, I've noticed that I've had a lot more success when I've used a little bit more peat moss and um, cocoa coir uh, in terms of the ratio to that to the more of the chunky, well-draining um, ingredients in the soil mix. So again, just to kind of clarify, um, when you're just potting them up with the rooting, rooting hormone for the first time, I tend to go a little bit heavier, like a two to one ratio with the two being um, the peat moss and cocoa coir and the one being like the chunky. Whereas now that I'm replanting these and repotting them, it's more of a one to one. All right, so I put these two in here and I've just got to kind of carefully hold on to those while adding some of this mix to this container. All right, so there you guys can see the two have been potted up together all in one. <laughs> there you go, it looks great. And now let me show you how to uh, get started at the beginning stage. And I'm gonna use these two containers uh, for those really long ones. When you're doing this whole thing, I would kind of hold off on watering for probably a few days, if not about a week, um, just to really um, allow the um, fishbone cactus, once it's dipped into this rooting hormone, to really kind of take place and take root, if you will. Um, if you water it right after, it could just wash away all of that rooting hormone and kind of defeats the whole purpose. But guys, propagating fishbone cactus is super easy to do. You basically, once it's dried out, um, get some of that rooting hormone on the base and basically just throw it into your container and that's it. All right, so I went ahead and just used the lid and put some of the rooting hormone into that. Now I can actually uh, get this in there. So let's show you, it's just really simple. Just get uh, as much as you can and then you basically just wanna kinda tap away any excess and that's it. So this guy I'm gonna put in here. All right guys, these are in their new home here. Now it does take uh, several months before you start to see some new growth. And then obviously you wanna give it some time uh, once the new growth has started before uh, repotting it like I have these two. So if you take a look at these two, uh, this piece here and this piece here were the original um, cuttings. And then all that other stuff that you're seeing is all actually new growth including this long one, crazy, I know. But uh, once you have some new growth like that, once I have new growth like that on these two, then uh, I'll, it will be a good time to uh, repot them. But that basically uh, sums up my fishbone cactus propagation. Let's move on to the next one. Guys, so believe it or not, these are both um, cuttings and propagations that I've taken from my huge Monstera. Now, uh, I use water propagation to propagate my Monstera Deliciosa, and it's so easy. It's actually even easier um, than what I just showed you with the fishbone cactus, um, and it's so exciting. So one is I've already repotted, and it has a ton of new growth. This one has been in this vessel with water um, for a little bit longer than Probably it should have been. It has a huge aerial root growing out of it and it's actually uh, produced a whole new leaf in there, but there is a ton of roots. So this is definitely ready to be potted up and that's what I'm going to show you. I'll also explain um, how easy it is to propagate your Monstera. It's super, super easy. So let's uh, get started. All right, like I said, propagating a Monstera is so much easier than uh, the fishbone cactus for a few reasons. Um, one, this is a water propagation. So you just need um, a container like the one I had with some water. And uh, once you've taken your cutting from your Monstera, you don't need any rooting hormone or anything like that. So the first consideration you really need to make is uh, where and how much do you cut 
of the uh, Monstera. So I typically like to take a cutting with at least two leaves and um, it's hard to tell because there's so much new root growth, but something that has at least two or three nodes. So you can actually kind of see um, the original um, nodes on this. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to point them out, but at least uh, two or three nodes, like I said, then that's basically it. You just plop it in your uh, water container and you can change out the water probably once every week. I don't even know if I did it that often and it won't be long before you see new root growth whatsoever. And then uh, you probably want to wait until you have a ton of new root growth. Um, you know, maybe not quite this much, but at least probably five, six inches uh, in root length. So you can see that some of these are even longer than that. And that is a great time uh, to transition um, your water propagation into a pot. So again, I'm gonna be using um, really sort of chunky, loose aeroid soil mix with, um, you know, a lot of bark, some perlite, uh, some coco coir and peat moss and uh, horticultural charcoal. And basically that's it. It's ready to be repotted uh, in here. I'm going to add um, some more of that soil mix on the top and that's it. And like I said, this is one that I had done previously and it's doing great. It actually has new growth on it. So it's super easy, guys. Um, so exciting. And that's basically it. I'm going to give this uh, guy really healthy watering and then remove any excess water uh, from the uh, pan or plate at the bottom. And then I'm gonna just place this guy in a nice spot where it gets a really good amount of dapple sunlight. All right guys, last but definitely not least is my chenille plant. Now this is probably a little bit trickier than uh, the um, fishbone cactus or the Monstera deliciosa, but it's really uh, also not very complicated to propagate this plant. Um, I've had a little bit less success, um, so it's a good idea to propagate um, using a few cuttings uh, in each little container to kind of increase the chances of successfully propagating um, each cutting. But let me just quickly go through how that all works. So basically you wanna take you know, a four or five inch um, cutting and then you're gonna dip that in your rooting hormone. Um, and basically you can um, put that into a little container with some soil, I think some perlite, uh, coco coir, and peat moss is a really good mix for uh, the chenille plant. Now, where it gets a little bit trickier is you do need a heating pad. Um, so what I would do is uh, put my propagations in there. Um, I would kind of put some water into the soil mix first, just kind of have it slightly moist, and then dip the cutting into the rooting hormone and then place it in the container, put that on the heat pad, and then you do need to place it in a nice sunny spot. Um, I've noticed even some of the um, little con containers like this that have been closer to the window that are getting more sun have been even more successful than the ones that are just set back like a couple of inches, which is insane. Um, so I've successfully propagated, as you can see, four here. Um, I've got one or two uh, right here, and another one that's worked out here. This one would have originally had four, so three didn't work out. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But basically now I'm ready to combine all of those propagations into this one um, container. So again, I'm gonna use a coco coir, uh, perlite and peat moss mix, put that soil in here and then get these in here. And then hopefully this gets nice and big and bushy. Um, and I'm not sure if you can see, but there's some teeny, oh, teeny, teeny, teeny uh, of the pink chenille uh, bits that are coming in, which is super exciting. All right, guys, so this is kind of from the first round of propagations that I had done. And as you can see, there's a ton of roots um, on that propagation. Whereas if you look at one of the um, newer ones I had done, I don't know if you can see this, um, there's a lot less uh, kind of root action going on, but there are roots. So let me get all of this potted up and show you guys what it looks like. All right, guys, this is already looking amazing. So I have about, I think, six uh, 
little cuttings that I propagated that I've now put into this one container. And now I'm gonna give this a healthy watering and find a nice sunny spot for it. And uh, so excited to show you how this fills out over time and especially when it starts to flower. So guys, that's it for me. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up or hit that subscribe button. Also, let me know, are there any other houseplants that you would like to know how to propagate? If so, uh, leave a comment down below. Miss you guys already. Until the next one.